Brian back here with a look at Caspa. We talked about this support line yesterday that has held. We're going to take a look at some targets here for this thing, uh, see where this could be, possibly be going. Uh, some people I see over in the, the Discord over there made some really nice money on this Caspa trade. And this thing pulled back right perfectly. And we'll, we'll dig into this chart, but we posted this the other day on uh, Discord. Look at this move. I think this is on the four hour, but take a fib and swing it up here. Look at this. I mean, if that isn't a perfect spot to enter a crypto, you know, right there. Look at that. P perfect 702. You know, I, I seen over in Discord somebody ended up getting a 300% trade on that. Congratulations, man. That was, uh, there you go. Perfect. I don't know if you've seen my. Uh, post or if you went on your own there and did that but very good job man that's that's fantastic or or uh, ma'am um not sure I, I didn't see the name i just seen plus 300 percent there so nice trade um this this caspa move here what's it been so far from that 702 nice move 20 percent you know so if you're on a 20x leverage that's a 400 percenter um you know a 30x leverage that's that's a 6x in your money just in that one move right there that's the power you know a lot of some people out there get and get the negative feeling about it uh, um, using uh, leverage uh, you know if you use it correctly uh, it's a great tool man I mean if you if you have a hundred dollars you know and that's that's what you have in your trading account uh, and you can use uh, 10x leverage that gives you the power to trade with a thousand dollars you know, or 20x leverage, or two thousand dollars. I mean, you know, with your hundred dollar that's in there. You know, so if you use it correctly, uh, you can you can make some really nice money. You know, and and just be responsible and be smart. Put stop losses. Don't just uh, place a trade and go to bed and then wake up and have no money left. You put a stop loss. You know, you let, if you uh, you know, for for instance, if you're watching this and it's coming down. You have your entry down here, you know, you're waiting for a 618 or 702, you know, retracement. Just uh, if it's going to bounce, that there would be the area, all right? You put a, uh, an order in right here and you go to bed. Um, make sure you just put a stop loss, you know, put a stop loss. And I don't, wherever you, wherever you want, but blow down here at the 7, below the 786, you know, that way if it, if it comes and falls through, uh, you're stopped out. But... You know, if you get this trade, you know, then you, that's, there you go. You can 6x your money, uh, or you could possibly lose a little bit of money. So that's, that, that's why I love uh, using uh, leverage trading. So um, if it's something you're interested in, go over and check out a level three membership for 15 bucks, sign up and come and join us. You know, it gives you a link to our discord and 10 hours of videos to teach you how to start charting. So let's move on here, guys. Let's go over here to the fear and greed index and see where it is at today. I haven't looked today. 33 is that right let's reload it I don't know if it's come up any or not I really I just I, I didn't shut my laptop down last night just opened it up yeah 37 oh, there we go still in fear but uh, you know halfway up through there 46 is, is where we get out of fear uh, but then comes the you know the greed so uh, we don't want to see that the fear is fine with me all right, that that's uh, here we go. The crypto bubbles. Wait, so this there we go. Wait, this might update here uh, because this has fetch at 2.2 percent. Let's see what this updates to. Last hour, last hour looks good. Casp was up uh, a half a percent the last hour. Fetch, man, oh man, we're boy, we're killing that trade over there in Discord. I was excited for this one, man. This huge fallen wedge, and and we're we're nailing it. Uh, Sui up 1.4 percent. This is the last hour uh, for the day. Uh, there you go. Uh, Caspa 1.1 percent. Monero 3.3. Injective 3.4. Bitcoin Cash two and a half uh, for the week. That looks a lot better. You know, we were taking a pretty good bait in there. Um, there's Caspa 6.7 percent. Um, Phantom. Phantom's making a nice move. That's something I don't. I don't look at Phantom very much. I should really. That's that's a great project. It really is injective too, uh, for the month. Uh, look at some of these. Uh, Word cast we go here. For the month, there it is. Three and a half percent. 
right? Look at Fetch, 55, Wave 55. Um, yeah, Fetch still has a long ways to go up. All right, let's move on here. How about the Block Explorer? Look at this, over a thousand petahash. We're at 1.08 uh, EH. Anyone know what that stands for? Could you put it in the comments? Um, something hash, I believe. Uh, instead of petahash, now we're at E hash, whatever that is. But we are over a thousand petahash now. That's incredible, isn't it? Um, I wish these things would whip uh, to a more stable 1.6 transactions per second and 0 0.8 blocks per second. Uh, the trans uh, over at the top addresses, we are ranked 21st. 21st out of all the cryptos out there. It's pretty impressive, huh? Um, watch these wallets go up here. Should be over 400,000. Yeah, 406,745. Hold at least one CASPA. All right. Last 24 hours were all green. Last seven days, all green. And for the month, uh, pretty much everything's red except the one Aquaman. All right. And uh, down here, that Aquaman must have, I think, was last month because we were, were down. A, the humpback turned into an Aquaman. That's awesome. Good for you. If you stumble upon this video or, uh, you know, or you have somebody that, that's impressive. I'm, I'm sure that's got to be one of the owners or, or maybe Caspa, the, the company, you know. Um, I don't know. But pretty impressive. Wouldn't that be awesome to own 1 billion to, to 10 billion Caspa? You know, even a whale or, or a shark, you have one million to ten million, you know. I don't own a million. I, I wish I did. I know some people that do that watch this channel. Uh, we have at least three of them uh, that are sharks. I don't know if they're whales, but they're definitely sharks. Uh, I've talked to them numerous times. Uh, one's Jimmy, um, but uh, the other two I can't remember offhand, but... Jimmy's a good guy. Uh, they told me about USDT dominance. We, we should be really looking at that more, and we really, really should. We're going to because USDT dominance is, is a big chart. Over here on Crypto News, uh, BlackRock, we seen that yesterday. New bill introduced uh, in Parliament to clarify crypto's legal status. There we go. UK Parliament introduces a bill to recognize Bitcoin and crypto as personal property. I, I like that. Um, that'll clarify crypto's legal status. Uh, Bitcoin dips as Harrison. Yeah, I watched that debate last night. And I'm sure a lot of you people did too. They didn't bring up crypto one time. Isn't that crazy? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, that is nuts. After uh, crypto companies have put $128 million into this election, they have put the more money uh, than any other uh, big uh, corporations have. Uh, that's crazy. 128 million. Uh, crypto stocks fall as bets on Harris win rise after the debate. Um, the Harris Trump debate showed how little crypto matters to voters. You know, <laughs> how little crypto matters to voters. Well, well, there's what was it? Isn't it over 100 million Americans own crypto? Uh, so I think. Uh, I think the crypto matters very much. And that's from Coindesk. Yeah, and maybe they mean something different by that. <clears throat> the Harris Trump debate showed how little crypto matters to voters and politicians. Trump and Harris didn't mention crypto once last night because despite the industry's pretensions to relevance, most people don't care about these issues, says Ryan Gorman. Uh, well, kind of true. We only care about, you know, about uh, what's going to happen with us. You know, presidential debates cover the issues that polling shows are most important. Immigration, health care, the economy, climate change, and more. So why was crypto not mentioned even once? Neither the American public nor the two presidential candidates uh, care very much about crypto. And the debate showed that. Despite the industry narrative becoming increasingly partisan, many voters are looking past the simple fact that those outside the fishbowl simply don't care. And it's blinding those inside it to a simple fact. Uh, for the most part, politicians tend to care more about remaining in office than anything else. Yeah, how about it? Half of them, I, I think, are like, have one and a half feet in the grave, you know? They, they stay in there until they're, uh, you know, how, how old are some, some of them are like in their late 80s, you know? I mean, 
Uh, that's crazy. Uh, you know, shouldn't they have to? And I'm not. But trust me, man. I am one of the most, I am one of the most respectful people. Um, I think so. My parents raised me right, but um, shouldn't they have to pass like some kind of cognitive cognitive test every uh, so many years? I mean, when you get and then no offense to anybody, but it happens to some people as you as you reach them later ages. You know what I mean? You start losing. A little bit here and there, you know, getting forgetful, and and that's when uh, I I really think they should, you know, if they they were going to make uh, Biden uh, take one and every you know, and as I th I think they should do that. Quite honestly, I think some of this is ridiculous. You should have to uh, at a certain age, you should be done. You know, um, let somebody else in. You know I, mean? I mean, they get stuck on their ways, and they're in office for fifty years, and. Uh, you know, you know what I'm saying. We need new, new blood here. But anyway, when anyway, it says about remaining in office and anything else, regardless of the party. Hopefully, most rational people can likely at least agree on that. It takes a certain type of person and ego to want to hold elected office, and that type of in individual is often reluctant to give up the stage once they ascend onto it. Biden's long refusal to rescue himself from this election cycle is a prime example. Uh, in order to stay in office, politicians need donations. Yes, Donald Trump did attend and speak at this year's Bitcoin conference in Nashville. He did make lofty promises and he did spec speculatory claim that all Bitcoins should be made in the U.S. But guess what? That doesn't mean it is actually a pressing concern. His sole purpose for being there was a fundraising dinner <clears throat> in which he charged, wow, attendees as much as $844,600 per person for a literal seat at the table with him. That's ridiculous. Every 840, if so, you should, uh, man, uh, the, the, I'm flabbergasted, right? Can you imagine how much good you could do with $844,000? How, how much you could help people with, with that much money? And you're going to pay that much money just to sit down with another human being that puts his pants on the way I put mine on, uh, talks the way I do. It, it, you know, it, we're the same. Uh, deer standing out in the field, every one of them are deer. Okay, I'm not going to pay almost a million dollars to sit down and have dinner uh, with anybody. I don't give a shit who it is. That's crazy. The maximum campaign donation allowed under law. Other attendees paid 60 grand for a picture with the former president. By comparison, a Kamala Harris San Francisco fundraising dinner not long after the Nashville event charged attendees anywhere from uh, 3,300 to 50 grand to attend and netted her $12 million. Unbelievable. If you think that's a lot, ju just you wait. The industry has gone to incredible lengths to sink the relevance it craves. A rational exuberance. Since the Citizens United rolling in 2010, which paved the way for the creation for super PACs, only one industry has outspent crypto. Only one industry has outspent crypto in terms of trying to garner influence in government, according to a recent analysis of campaign donations from the nonprofit Public Citizen. Only one industry has outspent crypto uh, trying to influence gov the government. Uh, since 2010, fossil fuel corporations have put in $176 million into political donations, including $73 million from Koch Industries. All right, now, this year alone, Koch has contributed nearly $30 million in, in the election cycle through two super PACs, and no one else is even close except for crypto. The digital asset industry, yeah, there it is, $119 million. That's, I said $120 million. Into this election cycle, nearly half of all corporate donations in 2024. Crypto has donated uh, nearly half of all corporate donations in 2024, which total 248 million so far. This is roughly the same amount the Senate Leadership Fund, a GOP affiliated super PAC that takes money from fossil fuel, tobacco, firearms, and for the profit uh, prison corporations has received since 2014. Um, the, the next closest super PAC to pair shake in terms of donations this year is the Koch backed Americans for Prosperity Action PAC, which has received 26 million in total. Wow, how about that? And if you'd like to read this, I'll just uh, go down, screen down through it real quick. But how about that? Almost a million dollars to have dinner with, with somebody that's insane. And uh, you know, I don't know, we'll, we'll see what happens with this. Uh, 
presidential election, but it, it's going to be big. You know what I mean? For for crypto, it's going to be big for everything, really. Um, you know, I I don't know. I I uh, I just want this war to end over there. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to get into all that stuff, but. Uh, I'm tired of seeing people die. You know, it's it, it, it's ridiculous. Anyway, look at Bitcoin here. We have that perfect pullback to that 702. This thing looks absolutely, uh, absolutely beautiful right now. All right, got a wick today down to what was it, 55, 55 and a half. Right back down towards that 618. Let's see here. Yeah, 55 and a half. Right back towards the 618 Fibonacci level here. Um, and shot right back up, okay, on that daily. Uh, we got Bitcoin dominance up a uh, quarter of a percent to 57.4, getting up there, you know. Um, expecting Bitcoin, this could be a wave one, two. That could have been the two wave right there. Uh, you got your daily RSI. Let's see where it's at here. Still heading up, bullish. Uh, five, let's see here. Five day, five days cranking up. Three day. Three days heading up and your weekly. Uh, weekly is just about reset here. Okay, on the bottom it's turned up, but it's still bearish right there. Just about a seven and a thirteen. But uh, you're gonna see, we're gonna see that spinning back around here. This, this chart is looking absolutely beautiful. Um, this bounce here. You know, once we get up in this range up here, let's see here. Let's try to get a line across this. Where's it go? Probably right through there like that. And that's about the got three touches right there. You know, something like that. Uh, and we have something coming up from the bottom here. If we take that there and come out through here, looks like we're wedging up again for Bitcoin. There you go. And we got the bottom of the end of the wedge down here. That's definitely a trend line. Um, at some point, I'm sure up through here, it'll tap it up here or something, and then you'll get your third touch. But this is absolutely, we have two touches. I know people out there are saying, no, oh, it needs three. But look at this, right on the weekly, we landed right on the 50-day moving average. Perfect. And bounced right off of it. Look at this. There, the red line here, that's your 50-day moving average. On the weekly, we nailed it right there. Uh, on the daily uh, we're still below it here on the daily. We actually had a death cross back here uh, last month, August 10th, right here on the daily. You had the 200 go above the 50 uh, right there. You know, so hopefully that's just a false signal, and, and we're we're gonna rip out of here. As far as the weekly goes, um, we yeah we like over here too. We. Uh, or no, I'm sorry, the 50 is back above the 200 here. We actually had a golden cross back here in January for Bitcoin on the weekly. On the monthly, on the monthly, we're, we're fine. Uh, still have that 50 there. Don't have a 200 on here. So I think Bitcoin is looking, looking pretty decent, guys. I mean, all the RSIs look good. At 702, looks absolutely perfect. So I don't see anything to worry about with this chart so far. That's for sure. On that daily, this could end up uh, running in uh, to that 50, right up around 60,000 bucks. Where's that on the fib? Oh, look at that. Right around that 618. Isn't that crazy? Wow, crazy how that works out. So it might have some resistance here. Um, I, I definitely think we're heading up there, up to 60 to 62. And we're going to see what happens up in that range. But let's go over here and take a look at Caspa. All right, got that beautiful bounce down there off that 702. This blue support line, we broke up through there. We've held it as support, actually. Okay, looks like a fifth wave coming in here, right? Those of you that watch the channel, uh, you know about Elliott waves. Look at this. Look, this looks like a one, two, three, four, and a fifth wave up right there. All right, let's see. If it is, if that's what it is, a fifth wave target, that's what it sure looks like. One, two, three, four, five. And inside that, you have one, two, three, four, five. Inside there, definitely looks like it. The target for that fifth wave would be uh, 17 cents, roughly. Maybe about 17 cents. So we'll see if it. Uh, and it don't always hit the hit the one six one eight, you know. Don't always hit the full extension, but that would be the target for it here. Okay, so I'd expect a fifth wave up here. Then maybe an ABC back to retest this now as support. 
Uh, you got that four hour, uh, four hours actually bearish, 55 and a 52. Got a little bearish divergence down the bottom here, all right? We have this high and a higher high in price. We have this high and a lower high on the RSI. So that could be indicating, uh, you know, a correction. You got the one hour, one hour is topped out. You know, got this high over here. Uh, got a higher high in price, lower highs on the RSI coming in. This one here was a higher, higher move than any of these over here. So, um, yeah, you could get this, you know, push up to 17 and then possibly an ABC. But right inside this, this also looks, you would have five waves inside of this fifth wave, you know, so you could get a pullback and then a push up here too. And that, that definitely looks like what's going on here. All right, over here, like I said, on, this, on the bigger move, one, two, three, this is all fourth wave and a fifth wave up here. Uh, one hour is getting near the top and the 12 hour, 12 hours at the top. You can see that 12 hour candle. Looks more like a fifth wave from here, don't it? Let's put a line up here on this target. Yeah, so we can uh, refer back to this tomorrow, see what happens here. Let's put it right on 17 in a price label right there that's what we're looking for here for a fifth wave right um then then yeah yeah and that's exactly it looks like a fifth wave then an abc possibly back down to the trend line here maybe maybe below it we'll have to see what happens here all right but in the short term that's what we're looking for here guys uh, a push here up to 17 and we'll see what happens that comes right in with resistance areas here let me show you let's put a line right at 17 there look at this we'll come over here and do it right at 17 look at all these cl the closing candles all through here uh, this one touches it right there all closing candles there closing candle here here yeah i bet you it comes right up and hits that 17 uh and then gets rejected off of it and does an abc you know not financial advice not a financial advisor guys but you know, hit it, ABC, and then we start pushing up through it. So, all right, we'll check back tomorrow. Have a great day, guys. Please hit that like and subscribe. Thank you so very, very much for watching the channel. I love you for it, and uh, have a great night, everybody.